Hey guys, it's Vaughn, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm a YouTube blogger, but I'm also an autism mom. This is an ongoing video series where I share my experience as a new mom to a toddler with autism. Hey guys, you're watching another Autism Mom vlog. If you're new here, definitely subscribe. Just so you know, I post Autism Mom vlogs and content once a month, every first of the month. Some of you guys were asking me in between videos what happened to the videos. I just post them once a month, you guys, because I don't want to turn my channel into an autism channel, but it is a big part of my life, a huge, massive part of my life, so I definitely want to include it, but only once a month. So today, you guys, hella busy the day started super early as you guys saw and woke up ready to play and get into things and i have a lot of work to do today my schedule is like airtight i should show you guys my calendar is ridiculous i do have a lunch meeting at ann's therapy center later this afternoon so i will probably try to vlog that on my phone just to bring you guys along but it's basically just like an educational moment for parents there aren't that many parents going because i saw the sign in shoes only like five of us but and i have a conference call later i have a bunch of content with brands that I'm working on at the moment so I need to do this voiceover thing so I'm trying to <coughs> get my voice ready for my voiceover and just a lot of stuff um, that I need to do today so it's a very busy day so today's discussion topic for you guys is going to be around what not to say to autism moms so I'm definitely going to be recording and inserting that footage after I vlog so if you guys are not interested in watching the vlog at all then make sure that you go to this timestamp so that you can just see the what not to say to autism moms content but if you guys are interested in watching the rest of my day and how it unfolds then just keep on watching it's always really nice to to hear from therapists and educators who are actually working with your child so it's much different from just googling something on the internet these people know and they work with her and they're the ones gonna be leading this presentation so I'm really excited about it I feel like this is really a great thing that they offer and like I said you know I don't miss any of them yeah, so I decided not to vlog this experience. There were far too few attendees and I didn't want to be weird, so. But I did want to just share some photo clips. So yeah, the presentation was very intimate, which I loved, and it was actually put on by two therapists who work with Anne. The one on the right is Kate, who is Anne's OT therapist, and the one on the left is Heather. The presentation talked a lot about morning and nighttime routines and how that kind of impacts the child's behavior. And you guys know I talk a lot about Anne's sleep issues and how we struggle putting her to bed at night and having her wake up in the morning. Kiddos on the spectrum are extremely partial to routine and regiment. So basically I took home a bunch of tips on how to adjust our schedule, identifying ways to improve time management, and ideas for how to improve structure and success of morning and night routines. I also got to see some examples of social stories and visual aids. We are definitely going to be creating a chart like this. And you guys, this is why I go to these kind of presentations because just in the few days after having experienced this, Anne's sleep has improved tremendously. Thumbs up if you'd like to see a video demonstrating what we learned. Hey guys, it's Vaughn again. Okay, so now we're at the part where we're going to have our chat. In my last Autism Mom vlog, I think it was number four, I mentioned that I was going to be doing what not to say to autism moms. In that video, I actually talked about what some of the early signs were for autism in our case. So if you guys haven't seen that video, definitely check it out, I will link it for you. So in this video, I'm just gonna touch on the things that I feel should be avoided in social interactions with autism moms. I just wanna give a few disclaimers before we jump into the content because y'all like to, you know, <laughs> put words in my mouth. Let me just say that um, this list that I have, right? I got stuff written down here. It does not, I'm not singling anybody out. This is not especially to the YouTube community because I do feel like that is a different space from 
face-to-face -face social interactions. I feel like on YouTube, you guys kind of get a pass because the questions that you guys ask in the comments are optional. Um, uh, an influencer does not have to answer those questions. So I feel like you guys get a pass. So some of these items on my list are, do appear in the comments oftentimes, but I'm not talking about any particular commenter. Um, like I said, you know, you guys are excused from this. What I'm mostly focusing on with this list and the people that I want to really penetrate with the things that I'm saying are mostly like friends and family and people who are involved in the lives of these children with autism. These are the people who I'm mostly talking to. So comment section, internet world, I'm not trying to stop you guys or, you know, try and control comments and all that kind of stuff. It's not that kind of ball game. I've also seen a lot of these videos on here where people are like literally snapping off and being all like, like having lots of attitude and all that, this is not that. And I also wanna say that if you are someone who knows me personally and you have asked one of these questions or said something that shows up on this list, please do not get offended. This is not to try and chastise anyone in any way. These are just things that I've identified as topics that should be avoided. So just kinda of take it as a learning experience. We all had to overcome some ignorance at some point when it comes to autism, even autism moms. So this is not an attack. And one more thing that I wanna say before we jump into this is that what's funny is that a lot of the stuff on this list I've actually gotten from other autism moms not even people who you would assume know nothing about autism or autism mom life but people who are in the same position as me who have given themselves permission to um, kind of cross some of these boundaries so we're gonna talk about that so let's go ahead and jump into the list I have gotten this one um, only a handful of times and it mostly occurs when I am telling someone for the first time about Anne's condition. So a lot of this happened like right in the beginning when I was telling a lot of my close friends and family and stuff. And I just feel like that's one of the worst things that a person can say. I, I feel like this, this is kind of from a place of word vomit, people not knowing how to react to the news, people saying what they think you wanna hear them say. I kind of feel like it's one of those things where the person is trying to offer some affirmation information to that mom as far as her suspicions and the whole diagnosis and everything they feel like they're kind of offering their support in the actual diagnosis if that makes sense so I know it's from a place of innocence and nobody is trying to um, hurt anyone when they say that but I do feel that it is inappropriate because in this instance no one wants to in hindsight think back to all of those times that you were in the presence of their child thinking that something is wrong with their child like that's pretty much the picture that you're painting when you say that. When a mother is telling you for the first time that her child has been diagnosed with autism, some of the best advice I could give you is just to be quiet and listen. Like listen to their whole story because I promise you, believe me, it is taking a lot out of that mom to even sit there and have that conversation with you. So it's probably a lot that she needs to get off her chest in that moment. So the best friend, the best family member, the best whatever you can be for them in that moment is just to listen and take it all in. When they want your opinion, when they are ready for you to kind of chime in and offer something back, they will let you know. And I assure you it won't be you saying how you knew all along that something was wrong with their child. This one tore me down when I first um, heard it. It tore me all the way down. But I think what helped me pull myself out of it was just realizing that this person was very silly and they really didn't have a whole lot of etiquette just generally. I was able to kind of like recalibrate and like, oh, you know, like fix myself before reacting to it. I mean, I'm sure that you, some of you guys are really jarred by that, but I have absolutely heard that before. It's not like I hear this all the time. Trust me, people aren't this ridiculous, but I have heard it once. And all it really did, honestly, you guys, was just make me realize um, the, the, the level of ignorance that I was going to have to be dealing with as time goes by. It really showed me how people don't really understand autism. They don't understand what it is. They don't understand how it affects the actual child, how it affects the family, how it affects the way the world views them. They don't get it at all. So when you hear a comment like that, you know it's coming from a person who probably doesn't really even know what autism is. Because they would know that talking about features and looks is something that was debunked a long time ago. When Anne was first diagnosed and I was in the process of kind of just like telling people, you know, you, you gotta let people know, at least for me, I wanted to 
tear down the curtains you know I wanted people to know I wanted people to be aware because I feel like the sooner you know what's going on the sooner you can start to educate yourself and get to a place where you understand my child better and you understand what I'm going through and you know I can't have a friend who doesn't know what I'm going through I can't have a family member who doesn't understand what I'm going through so for me it was important to get that information out there um, to as many people that I cared about as possible including you guys so I got a lot of people in my life who were asking me if I was sure of the diagnosis if I had gotten a second opinion if I was open to a second opinion if I was truly convinced myself that my daughter had autism and I was getting a lot of this you guys almost everyone I told gave me that kind of response and it didn't upset me right most of this most of this won't you know because I, I get it I'm in a place now where you know I I understand that people just don't know you know so I was not offended at all but it's just one of those things where it's introducing unnecessary stress for the mother and having to constantly validate one's decision to have their child evaluated for autism constantly challenging that mom to question her decision to accept the diagnosis from her, the doctors and it also took a lot out of me because in each of those instances I've had to break out the autism 101 info for people and really explain to them exactly what autism is because once you understand that it's not a one-size-fits-all cookie cutter condition where it affects every child in the exact same way you understand how unique it can be for each individual instance and having to explain that to people and and let them understand that you know the autism that you see in Anne is not going to express itself in the same way that it does for this other child that you knew growing up especially people in the industry right therapists um, special ed teachers they're experienced right you would look at them as professionals you would look at them as having valid opinions about your child's condition but what I've observed oftentimes is that they'll have this one set and this is not everyone right but they'll have this one set of symptoms and expressions of the condition that they can't see anything outside of that so if you have a special ed teacher that had a really bad experience in her classroom with a child with autism if she doesn't see those same behaviors in your child then she's going to question whether or not the diagnosis was valid and these are the kind of things that I've had to continue to address and overcome this is a really funny one um, yeah some of y'all watch too much TV <laughs> too many movies but I love it though I actually love when I get that one um, I do think that it should not be said I think people should just you know ease up on the assumptions and stereotypes but I don't get offended I actually think it's kind of cute but that is a myth right uh, I mean children with autism are extremely unique they learn and express themselves in an extremely unique manner so oftentimes we do find unusual and unique talents in that so it can be a great thing but but it should not be expected of a child right you should not come into the presence of a child who has autism and expect them to do something that's gonna wow you expect them to be like some kind of hidden genius or show you something that you've never seen before you should not expect that from the child and you should absolutely not ask the parents that but yes these children are extremely gifted and bright yes honey you got that part right this is probably the one that annoys me the most because it's usually coming from a person, and, and this is just my experience, right? It usually comes from people who have no experience with autism. And here's another added layer of foolishness. Usually they don't have children. These are people who feel like they know more than you. <laughs> They feel like they somehow have access to some information that you've never heard of or seen before. I've had people make suggestions to me about different things that I should try. CBD oil, witch's brew, holy water, exorcism, being around other kids their age, water therapy, air therapy, fire therapy. Some of the most annoying interactions I've had about autism, you guys, have come from people who feel like they know more, care more, have researched more than me. I assure you, in almost every case where there's an autism family you do not know more or have worried more or have sought more information than those two parents I assure you unless you know there are some exceptions in special cases but for the most part right you you embark on an educated couple they seem to be in their right mind believe me they are doing everything they can for that kid no one wants some know-it-all who doesn't even have kids coming around throwing around all these suggestions of things that they've heard you know in passing maybe they saw some Facebook article that popped up you know stuff like that these parents most of the time have done rigorous research they've had all of these long conversations with their child's doctors they've looked at all this alternative medicine 
you have to assume that they've done that. Now, here's what you should do. If you do have this brilliant idea that you feel you need to share with a set of autism parents, I think it's best to just ask what type of treatments have they explored and then let them talk to you, let them invite you into that space. But I think these, these kind of unwelcome suggestions um, should just be avoided. You're not helping anyone, you're just stressing those parents out. We're getting down to the last two and I'm saving the best for last. This next one, come on. So generally you guys, I think that questions around family planning are absolutely inappropriate to ask. And I have gotten this question from autism moms more than anyone else. Again, I feel that autism moms give themselves permission to cross some of these lines, some of these boundaries that they probably never would with anyone else. But because you are an autism mom like them, we both have a kid with autism, we can have these types of conversations without you giving me permission to do so. When I have conversations with other autism moms, I absolutely love it, I welcome it. Um, but lately I have been feeling a little bit of anxiety and sometimes I just don't know what to do because I don't want to be rude and I don't want to, you know, shut down or, you know, derail the conversation but there's been so many times where I've just felt like these are not appropriate conversations to be having because I'm not comfortable. And even outside of the autism conversation, I just feel like you shouldn't ask a woman or anyone, you know, when they plan on having another kid or when they plan on having a kid. Those are family planning conversations. And the way that I've handled those, especially recently, my husband and I are having conversations about that. And once we have a decision, we'll let you know. I have literally said that. And I feel like when I say that, People realize right away how invasive of a question that was. And I don't even have to say, hey, you're asking me an invasive question. Hey, you're violating my boundaries of privacy. I don't even have to say that. The way that I frame my answer, an educated person realizes right away, ooh, I took it a little too far. And I just kind of let them have that realization for themselves. That's just how I've been handling it. I feel like within the autism conversation, people feel that it's only right to talk about you know, your plans for future kids because there's this assumption that an autism mom is fearful of having another kid with autism or that she feels that she won't be prepared to handle anything else but that one kid is taking all of her attention and all of her efforts. And these are reasonable assumptions, you guys. I'm not saying they aren't. What I am saying is that the decisions that go into family planning, especially in the autism world, are extremely delicate and private and emotional and stressful and it's not something that should be brought up in just casual conversation and i just really want people to understand that and now we've come to my number one cringiest question that i get from people around autism can you guys guess what that question is explain to you all the reasons that that question makes me uncomfortable but instead of doing that I'm going to give you guys an example and I'm gonna let you unpack it is it or is it not inappropriate to ask a person who has been diagnosed with lung cancer if they smoked I'm not saying that vaccinations are the reason that children have autism I'm not saying that at all but what I'm saying is, you know why you're asking that question. And you really need to consider whether or not that's appropriate to ask, given the context of the situation. Autism parents have a lot on their plates emotionally. A lot of them have blamed themselves at some point in the process. Some autism moms have been suicidal, extremely depressed and anxious. You've had situations where those parents have abandoned that child. Other family members have abandoned that child. When you talk about a mom and dad having to deal with a diagnosis as serious as autism, and especially for first time parents and first time moms. So to ask a mom that question, to me is very confrontational and I almost don't know what people expect to get from you as an answer. You know, for those people who are anti-vax, you want that mom to just start going into a rant about how she blames herself and she blames her doctor for hurting her child in that way and or, or the mom who is like doesn't buy it at all and she thinks that people are nuts for even thinking that and she feels that there's not enough research to even back it up. On either ends of those two different views, is that the type of conversation that you really Really want to have with someone like even if you know them really well like you I mean it's, it's extremely confrontational it's inviting like this really intense energy and it's like do you feel that you even deserve to get that from that mom and, and, and I don't understand why people ask that question I don't and it is my top 
most annoying, most mood changing question that you can ask me as this autism mom. That is the worst. I hate when people ask me that. It ruins everything. And honestly, I haven't gotten to a point where I would just say like, um, I'm uncomfortable with this question. <sighs> Especially when other autism moms ask me that. Because I don't want, you know, like I said, to end on a bad note. I don't want the conversation to end. I love having conversations with autism moms. So I've just, I've just dealt with it. Honestly, you guys, with avoidance, I changed the topic. I almost never answer the question, right? Because it is just that uncomfortable for me. I also haven't been really honest with myself or the person I'm talking to. I haven't gotten to that point yet. But probably after this video, I'm, I probably will be more comfortable just simply saying I'm uncomfortable with that. But where I am now and the things that I've dealt with and where I'm trying to be mentally and the positive mindset that I am truly, truly working on every single day, I haven't gotten to that point yet. So we've talked about all these different things that I feel, me personally, right, these are my opinions, this is not law, about what types of topics should be avoided when having a conversation with an autism mom, what not to say to autism moms. So you guys, then what do you say to an autism mom, right? Some of you guys out there are like, yes, please help me, what do I say, what is appropriate? So I'm gonna tell you guys the mind frame you should be in when you're talking to an autism mom, and then that way you can frame your own topics of conversation and figure out on your own what's appropriate to bring up and what's not. So when talking to an autism mom, you're talking to a person whose mind is racing probably 100 miles per hour all day, every day, always thinking of ways to help her child, always trying to fit in time to do things for her, trying to get things done, trying to work, trying to run the household. You're talking to a person who is wearing many, many hats. I think what's appropriate in the context of autism is to ask her, is she okay? And I'm telling you, honey, at least for me, that woman is going to start talking your head off. You ain't gonna have to come up with no topics, okay? She's going to vent to you, okay? Being a helping hand, being an ear, being a shoulder to lean on, honey, is the best thing you can do for a woman who is raising a child with autism. How can I help? Try asking her that and she will open up to you. I just want you guys to consider the feelings and the triumphs of that autism mom that you're talking to before you start bringing stuff up. Based on everything that I listed today and my do's and don'ts, as you can see, you guys, this stuff isn't rocket science. It's really just having an understanding and empathy for that person. And what's missing from this is education and awareness. That's why I do these videos. That's why I do what I do. I don't get on here and talk about what's going on with my child and stuff for views so I can entertain you guys, so I can impress you guys. That's not what this is for. This is my way of contributing. When I found out how very little support from a community perspective was out there for autism, I said, I have a platform. I'll be damned if I don't contribute. This is ridiculous, is what I was thinking. When you walk into a pediatric clinic and your pediatrician is dumbfounded by the things that your child is doing or not doing, that is a problem. Autism is a real condition. It's a diagnosable condition. Why is it that your doctor doesn't know enough about it? Well, it's because from a societal perspective, it's not being talked about enough. It's not a priority. It's not a part of enough conversations. And that's why you have these inappropriate things being brought up and people not even knowing how to handle it because it's not a commonly talked about thing. So my whole point is to normalize autism, especially on my channel, so that when you guys see my daughter or you see me doing things and we're doing things differently, it's because my child is different. And my goal was to normalize those differences, at least around here. <laughs> so that is it for today's vlog, you guys. I hope this video was helpful like all the others. If you guys have not subscribed, definitely do so. I put out these autism related videos once a month, every first of the month. So make sure that you're tuned in around that time so you can see more or just subscribe and hit the notification button so that you can be notified every time a new video is posted. I appreciate you guys being here. I appreciate you caring enough about the title and the subject matter to even watch this video to the end. I appreciate you. I love you guys and I will absolutely see you in my next one. Bye.